What's up, YouTubers, tankers, and fighter aces? Throttle Geek here, bringing you some War Thunder. This is going to be a new series dedicated to the mostly sim combined battles, but also will be mainly focusing on sim and specifically the War Thunder aviation aspect of the sim action to be found in War Thunder. That is not to uh, dissuade any tankers from watching this. I, I do enjoy the tanks. It's just not my main focus area. I am a real pilot in real life, <clears throat> so I see a lot of things in game occasionally that uh, I wish I could share information with that person because if you've ever met a pilot in real life, we love to talk airplanes. So I was playing a game the other day and I saw something that uh, <laughs> really bothered me and, it, and I had such a great view of it and it was such a um, fantastic example of what I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, which is related to takeoffs. Now there have been plenty of videos um, talking about takeoffs and I probably will do a video related to um, proper takeoff technique. Um, but what you're going to see coming up here is very interesting because the uh, pilot in question <clears throat> pretty much makes every mistake that you could possibly make uh, while taking off in a sim mode. So uh, let's get right to it and show you what happened. Okay guys here we are in the replay mode. This was all the aircraft that spawned in on the Allied side. And um, the pilot in question here I'm going to talk about is here in the P-47 in the rear. Now I'm up here in this P-47 and we are flying the exact same aircraft. This is the P-47D-25, the first one that uh, you unlock in the tree. Um, do apologize for my voice guys. I'm, I'm losing my voice a little bit. I think I've caught some crud from my uh, youngest son. but. <coughs> Anyways, I'm going to have to clear my throat here now. Regardless, the P-47 in question here, I wanted you to notice, is fully loaded. So these two bombs here on the wings are 1,000 pounds apiece. And then this is a 500-pound 500, 500 bomb here in the center. And he's also armed with 10 HVAR rockets. So this is the heaviest loadout in the game that the P-47 can take off with. I mean, it is the heaviest load available that this aircraft will ever take off in the game. The runway is, is plenty long enough. It's not the longest runway, but it is uh, sufficient for allowing the takeoff of this aircraft. Now, when we, you'll see when we start the takeoff roll here, I'm going to show you the view first from my perspective in my aircraft because he gets rolling a little bit before I do, probably because he didn't quite prepare. And I'm not sure if this guy, I didn't talk to him. <clears throat> I don't know if he is a new sim player or very very infrequent sim player or maybe perhaps he just forgot that he was loaded up with all the uh, bombs and rockets underneath his airplane because his technique after he rotates and gets off the runway is very odd and it pretty much is going to showcase every mistake that I wanted to talk about but the problems begin right here um, I spawned into the game before he did and I'm getting everything ready to go. I've already started my engines. I have set my flaps for takeoff so they are slightly lowered. I use the external view to make sure that my nose was pointed straight down the runway. Occasionally you'll spawn in a game and you may be off to the side like these guys and you just want to be aware of that <clears throat> so that you can get the uh, correct alignment with the runway going uh, before you, you know, you don't want to be surprised by that which is sort of what seems to happen to this guy on the takeoff roll. So I'll uh, roll the video here in a second and you'll see he never selects any takeoff flaps. Now why is that important? Well flaps do two things. They increase the lift of the wing and they increase the drag on the airframe, the entire airframe of the airplane. So you're going to go slower. It's going to cause you not to be able to accelerate as well. However the wing is able to generate sufficient lift at a slower airspeed. So it helps decrease takeoff roll and it helps the airplane to climb at a slower airspeed and the main function of that is that your stalling speed is reduced to a lower number. So you're taking off with this heavy load underneath your wings it's advantageous to have a lower stall speed so that you have more 
uh, I guess, uh, distance between your speed that you've set for takeoff and your stall speed because you don't want to be anywhere near it because you're so low to the ground and you're so heavily loaded. There's not going to be pretty much any time to recover as you'll see. So we're going to switch to my perspective and run it in um, real time at 1.0 and you can see what happens. <clears throat> and then we'll go back and I will point out all the mistakes that our uh, unfortunate friend here makes during his takeoff roll and on his climb out. So uh, right now those guys have already started rolling. I'm preparing to roll, making sure I'm lined up. And as I'm doing it, I notice another P-47 goes by. Now, I didn't know until after the fact that uh, he was loaded out like I was. I also have all the bombs and rockets on my airplane good to go. I waggle around a little bit here, but uh, pretty much going straight down the runway. You can see he's way off to the left side up here. He, this is him right here. So he has lifted off, and he's begun his climb out. <clears throat> You'll see me do the same here in just a moment. Now I used a little bit extra space. I'm really concerned about my stall speed with that heavy load. Now you see his nose dipped, and then his wing falls, and then he goes into the ground, and obviously he wasn't very happy about it because he dropped all his bombs and started shooting. All right, now let's look at that from a better view of him. All right, guys, here we are with our... Uh, unfortunate friend and his uh, departure stall into a spin on uh, after takeoff. So the first thing that I noted earlier to you is that his flaps are at zero. You can see they are not set for takeoff and he is uh, preparing to roll here. So let's go ahead and uh, roll it and I'm doing it in half speed here probably just because I need uh, plenty of time to talk. <coughs> I might speed it up for a moment here just to get him going. It looks like he cut his engine off there. Maybe he wasn't sure. That's another thing that uh, makes me think maybe he lacked some experience in the uh, sim mode. But uh, he starts uh, rolling his power in, and already he the, his nose is left of the runway. So he's headed for the tents, and I think he kind of realizes it. And he starts putting some rudder correction in to get lined up, but he doesn't he doesn't really get it back over towards the center where he really wants to be. And then he's kind of flopping around some here. It just seems like he's generally inexperienced and, you know, he's kind of over-controlling level. He might even have his sensitivity on his uh, joystick or controller or, or mouse joystick, whatever he's using. He might have it a little, a little too high because his rudder wags around a lot here. And you'll see right here when, he's, when he, he sees the, uh, the machine gun nest here and the tower ahead and he kind of panics a little bit. So he slings the nose over to the right with a, a whole lot of rudder. The whole time he's doing this, he is hurting his airspeed. His airspeed is not as fast as it would otherwise be. You can see it's 105 knots right here. Uh, if he was lined up pretty much down the runway, it wasn't slinging his tail back and forth the whole time. You can also note that his elevators are raised. Um, ideally, he should have had his tail up in the air already so he can get better speed, and he rotates and he's off. The first mistake he makes right here is that he needs to have raised his landing gear faster. Plus, look at that pitch angle. He, this is the heaviest load you can get. His gear is still out, and his angle for climb is insane. It is way too high. He starts getting the first indication of a problem here with the uh, contrail streaming off the end of the wing. Now, that's how the game tells you that you're getting close to your stall speed. It gives this little visual indication. And there's a sound in the cockpit that is kind of like an audible metal flapping in the wind sound. All of which should have been a clue to him that something bad is about to happen. Now, his, still is gear, his gear is still out. Why is his gear out? I have no idea. Um, so eventually he's climbing along here. His airspeed will start to decrease. And he starts to get into trouble. <clears throat> He has no flaps down, so his stall speed is higher. If he had his flaps down, his stall speed wouldn't be as bad. Now, the airplane stalls, and when he starts to stall, he starts to get uncoordinated. His left wing starts to dip, and still he has no rudder correction. Then he realizes his gear is down. It's like, oh, so then he brings his gear up. He does start to accelerate, but then he makes a mistake. Watch his elevators. He starts trying to pitch the nose back up because he sees he's going. He goes further and further, which causes the airplane to stall. 
the wing dips, he still has no rudder correction. To stop a stall from developing into a spin, you have to have rudder correction. So now he is fully he's fully committed to this spin now. There's not there's nothing that he can do about it. His his actions are too late at this point in time. And he knows that he's just gonna continue into the ground. And he's a little bit frustrated and upset. His game's over. He throws all his bombs and starts shooting. Anyway, guys, what you need to take from that is proper technique down the runway, straight, get your gear up so that it's not creating drag on your airframe. I still have takeoff flaps, so even though my speed, <clears throat> and you can also notice I'm already at a higher speed, but my stall speed is lower than his, so he stalled around 107, 108 knots or whatever with the flaps up. So with the flaps down, I'm well above whatever the stall speed is. The other thing you need to remember from his situation is that climb angle was crazy. Airplanes stall when they exceed the critical angle of attack. That is, the relative wind, which is the air flowing into the front of the wing and then over it and under it, the angle at which that relative wind strikes that wing is called the critical angle of attack. If you exceed that angle at which the airplane can collect the wind over the top of the wing, it will break loose. It will um, The laminar flow will be disrupted across the top of the wing, and then you'll get the stall. He went from a stall, which he was still recoverable, I believe, at that point, into the spin because he tried, once the nose started dipping towards the ground, he tried to force the issue by pulling back on the stick even further and then when he fully developed the stall at that point, he had no coordination from his rudder. You've got to keep your nose centered straight in front of you during a stall or your airplane is going to want to develop into a spin. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new about flying airplanes and about flying airplanes in sim mode. And we'll see you out there in the skies.